So there are many ways to build a team in the NBA. You can do it through trade, signing players and free agency, and of course, drafting them. And because how complicated and convoluted the process could potentially be, what most teams in the NBA tend to do is just tank, cross their fingers and pray to Sam Hinkie that the player that they're drafting is going to be a franchise player. And quite frankly, I don't even know if tanking actually works, but that's for another video for another day. In today's video, what I'm going to share with you all is a team that's actually done it a little bit differently. And that team are the Toronto Raptors, an organization that throughout its history has had problems trying to sign big name free agents. So the only way that they've been able to actually build to where they're at right now is through trading and drafting players. And interestingly enough, the Toronto Raptors somehow, some way, have built a championship caliber roster with only non-lottery players. So how exactly did the Raptors, and huge shout out to Masai Ujiri who is the general manager for the organization, how exactly were they able to pull this off? Well, the rebuilding process begins on July 11th, 2012, a year before Masai Ujiri took over the general manager spot. The Toronto Raptors were in desperate need for a starting caliber point guard and ran through some of their options and unfortunately nothing really panned out. But fortunately for them, the Houston Rockets were willing to give up on Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry's career started off with the Memphis Grizzlies back in the 2006 draft class when he was selected 24th overall. And in his first two or three years in the NBA, he received little to no playing time and really was more of a bench player than a starter. And his tenure with the organization came to a conclusion once the Memphis Grizzlies selected Mike Conley in the 2007 draft. From there, he was traded to the Houston Rockets, again was a bench player, but worked his way up to a starting role with the organization. But since the Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming era came to a conclusion prematurely, the Houston Rockets started to quickly deal away some of their assets, one of which was Kyle Lowry, and that's how he found himself on the Toronto Raptors. Now fast forward to May 31st, 2013, and that's when Masai Jury was named the general manager for the Toronto Raptors. As GM, Masai had a few things that he had to immediately take care of. The first problem was Andre Bargnani, as Bargnani really wasn't productive at all and quite frankly, many people would label him a bust. So to solve this problem, he would have to unload Bargnani on one of the more gullible franchises in the NBA and would you have guessed it, the New York Knicks were prime pickings. As the Knicks were willing to fork over Marcus Camby, Steve Novak, Quentin Richardson, two second round picks and a 2016 first rounder. Now let's fast forward to December when Masai Jiri had his second problem that he had to address and that was Rudy Gay. So just like Bargnani and the New York Knicks, Masai had to find an organization that was gullible enough to trade for Rudy Gay. And would you have guessed it, the Sacramento Kings were ripe for the pickings. As the Sacramento Kings are willing to give up Chuck Hayes, Patrick Patterson, John Salmons, and Grievous Vasquez. Now by the end of the 2013 season, the Toronto Raptors were still a losing organization but had seen a lot of progression, especially in the chemistry between Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. So entering the 2013-2014 season, they were poised to make a playoff push and that's exactly what they did. Finishing the season with a record of 48-34 and but unfortunately fell short in the first round. And unfortunately, a very similar story can be told for the next season as well. A huge problem for the Toronto Raptors was a lack of experience as that was the first two years in DeMar DeRozan's career in which he made a postseason appearance. However, that is something that was going to change within time, or, or at least that's what many people assumed. Because of this, Masai Jiri could really only change what was in his control, which thus brought his attention to the bench and the lack of depth on his roster, which he would soon fix. Thus bringing us to the 2015 draft, and with the 20th overall pick, the Toronto Raptors selected DeLon Wright. A 6'5 guard out of the University of Utah who showed some promise but obviously did not impress enough teams to be selected higher in the first round. Fortunately though, the Raptors saw the value in DeLon Wright, selecting him and decided to go in a different direction with Vasquez as DeLon Wright should potentially fill his role. So later on that night, in the second round with a 16th pick, the Milwaukee Bucks selected Norman Powell. Toronto seized the opportunity, decided to trade Vasquez, and in return not only received Norman Powell, but also a 2017 first round pick. Now for those out there who are unfamiliar with Norman Powell, Norman Powell is a 6'4 guard out of UCLA, spent all four years in college, but very similar to DeLon Wright, did not impress enough franchises to be selected higher in the draft, 
So when the Milwaukee Bucks were given the opportunity to receive immediate help from Vasquez, they were willing to also give up a first round pick in return as well. And looking back at it now, as we all know, Norman Powell is a very productive player coming off the bench for the Toronto Raptors and has given them a certain level of bench depth that quite frankly only a handful of teams in the NBA can rival. And with the newfound bench depth, as well as the experience gained from DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, by the end of the 2015 season, the Toronto Raptors were a 56 win team and found themselves in the conference finals before falling short to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Which thus brings us to the 2016 draft. Remember that Bargnani trade where the New York Knicks for whatever reason gave up a first round pick? Well, that first round pick will materialize in this draft class. As the Toronto Raptors had two first rounders, one of which were the New York Knicks, which was a ninth selection in which they decided to go with Yaka Pertl. And then their second first round pick will be the 27th selection in which they drafted Pascal Siakam. Now I'm not gonna go into too many details about Pascal Siakam as we can clearly tell that he is easily one of the most improved players, if not the most improved player this season, and he is having a remarkable impact on that team. But going back to the 2016 draft, it is very interesting to see how their late first round pick turned out to be a better player than their lottery pick. And then fast forward to July 18th, just a few weeks later, the Toronto Raptors decided to add even more depth to their roster by signing undrafted prospect Fred Van Vliet. Van Vliet would go on to bounce in and out of the G League, very similar to DeLon Wright and Norman Powell, but somehow, someway actually come across as one of the more productive bench players on this roster, and in his third season has been a double digit score while shooting 36% from behind the arc. Now fast forwarding to the trading deadline on February 24th, 2017, Masai Jiri needed to make an upgrade at one of their weakest positions and that was the power forward spot. And with him acquiring so many productive young guard players in the draft and even undrafted as well, the need for Terrence Ross was quickly starting to dissipate. So like he normally does, Masai Jiri had to find an organization that was desperate enough to trade for Terrence Ross and in return give him what he needed. And would you have guessed it, the Orlando Magic, they were ripe for the pickings. Because for whatever reason, and I still do not understand this at all, the Orlando Magic decided to make a massive risk by trading away Victor Oladipo and in return receiving one year of Serge Ibaka as his contract was going to expire by the end of the year. So Masai Jiri does what Masai Jiri does best, take advantage of the opportunity, traded Terrence Ross as well as a draft pick and in return received Serge Ibaka. Unfortunately, that wouldn't be enough in the playoffs and the Toronto Raptors for the second consecutive season would fall short to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Which thus brings us to the 2017 draft and remember that vast quest trade to the Milwaukee Bucks and how Toronto received not only Norman Powell but a 2017 first round pick, well that pick would materialize to be OG Ananobi. Ananobi was a sophomore out of Indiana University and actually was a player who was projected to be drafted higher than when he was selected. However, due to a knee injury and him undergoing season ending surgery, he was viewed as too much of a risk and thus dropped all the way to the 23rd selection in which again Toronto drafted him. And oddly enough, even though many people don't talk about OG and Anobi anymore, he actually spent a lot of time receiving starter minutes in his rookie season and played some very valuable minutes in the postseason. Something that we could probably look back and somewhat seem as questionable especially when his main assignment in the playoffs was LeBron James, which really didn't end too well for the Raptors as they fell short to the Cleveland Cavaliers for their third consecutive season. However, having a player like OG Nanobi on your roster, especially with his wingspan and beside a player such as Siakam, should have come across way more valuable than I think many people anticipated when they made that selection. But like I alluded to already, the Toronto Raptors fell short to the Cleveland Cavaliers for the third consecutive season in a sweep, and Masai Jiri had to make a very tough decision. As it was very clear that he had already done his part by acquiring a multitude of talented pieces to add on his roster, and yet for whatever reason, Toronto continued to fall short in the postseason. So in the summer of 2018, changes needed to be made. He fired Dwayne Casey and promoted Nick Nurse and decided to make a decision on DeMar DeRozan as well. Now this part is a very interesting development to me because I definitely would not say that the San Antonio Spurs are as incompetent as the New York Knicks or the Sacramento Kings, but yet my intrigue has still been stimulated because it definitely comes across that Masai Jiri came out on top yet again with another transaction. As Masai Jiri sent over DeMar DeRozan a 29th first round pick and Yako Pertle, remember Pertle was received via draft pick from the Bargnani trade from the New York Knicks, so it all still kinda connects with one another, to the San Antonio Spurs, 
and in return received Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard. And when this transaction went through, I immediately thought to myself that Masai Jiri yet again came out on top, as Danny Green, who was a second round pick from the Cleveland Cavaliers, has really built himself in to be a competent 3 and D player within his time with the San Antonio Spurs. And then Kawhi Leonard, as many of us are aware, was a 15th overall pick from the Indiana Pacers, but was traded to the San Antonio Spurs in return to receive immediate help from George Hill at the point guard position in which the Pacers desperately needed. However, when it comes to Kawhi Leonard, he was indeed perceived to be a project, and as we all can clearly tell, the outcome of that project is a MVP caliber player. And as many people expected, Kawhi Leonard is basically the same player that he once was, extremely productive on both ends of the floor, and potentially leading the Raptors to their first 61 season in franchise history. And so, as Messiah Jiri normally does, he decides to maximize his potential, bringing us to February 7th, 2019, as Messiah has acknowledged that, again, he has a weakness in his rotation and that is at the center position, so he decides to find a very gullible and desperate organization with the Memphis Grizzlies, trade away CJ Miles, DeLon Wright, again, another late first round pick, and Valanchunas to the Memphis Grizzlies and in return receive Marc Gasol. And the reason why this is interesting is because Valanchunas was their last lottery player. Valanchunas was selected fifth overall in the 2011 draft class and at one point his value was so high that ex-GM Brian Colangelo of the Toronto Raptors decided to decline the trade of acquiring James Harden largely due to the perception of how much potential that Valanchunas could bring to the organization. And yet, here we are, several years later, and Valens Chunas is being packaged together for a 34-year-old Marc Gasol. My oh my, how things change. And that actually brings us to where we are now. Granted, players such as Marc Gasol, Kawhi Leonard, and Serge Ibaka were not drafted by the Toronto Raptors. However, it is very interesting to see how Masai Ujiri and the Toronto Raptors have been able to finesse multiple organizations to build their roster to where they are now. And ironically, majority of the players that they traded away were lottery players, and in return, they received players who were selected outside of the lottery in their respective draft classes. And with that being said, please let me know what you think about the video in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this type of video, please let me know if you want me to do the same thing for the Milwaukee Bucks. And also, I do want to figure out if tanking actually works. I really have a theory that it doesn't work whatsoever, and I just think the Philadelphia 76ers are trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. But with that being said, I will see you all later. Peace.